Alright, as I was looking back through my videos, I realized I had made the mistake of uh, forgetting to include at the end of part one that I, when I thought I included it was Zen Map, which is pretty much the first step we should have used instead of uh, Grendel or Cat. But uh, this will just give us an overview and kind of do, kind of just cover uh, some of the basics we missed a little bit in the previous tutorial. So. Essentially, uh, you need to scan because if you're running for backtrack, you want to see all the hosts that are in the way or what might the network map look like. So if you're running it from your backtrack machine, um, we're going to enter our target, which is 70.54.10.1, and we're going to do an intense scan. And uh, since that takes a while, I have taken the liberty of already finishing one of them. and. So 70.54.10.1, um, an intense scan goes through a lot of uh, a lot of the ports and does a lot of the overviews, and it's something that could probably get you caught if you were really doing it uh, straight from your desktop. It, it'd be something that would be very noticeable to any intrusion detection system. But but since we're not worried about that, we're just going to go ahead and scan the whole thing. And once it's done, it generates a lot of output. So notice right away that it caught um, two ports open, port 80 and port 23. So that's good there and if you scroll down you'll see it gives a little more information here. Uh, 23 TCP open Telnet Cisco router. It's always good to know what you're dealing with. And then 80 Microsoft IIS HTTP D7.5. So a lot of useful information right there. And if you scroll down, um, network distance three hops. It's fairly simple. One or one, two, three hops. Pretty easy. Um, TCP sequence prediction. That is, if you're doing a TCP sequence hack, um, obviously difficulty is 262 equals good luck, which means not a chance in the world. Um, Service info, OS is, uh, is iOS and Windows, uh, device router, Cisco iOS, and Microsoft Windows. So, and this just shows what hops it took. And this is a more detailed thing of the uh, ports and hosts. And this is essentially you. So if you're running it from localhost, it's going to show all the hops along the way until you get to your destination. So that's fairly useful. Host details, nothing much that we haven't covered already. So, and that just shows the list of scans that you've already done. So, that's basically one of the first things you should do. Obviously, probably through a proxy or a compromised system. Uh, you don't want this running directly from you. You can try and spoof the IP address and all that, but it's always best to run it from another system that you control. So, or a proxy of some kind. All right. All right, the next thing we're going to talk a little bit about is HPing 3, and we're going to cover just some of the basics right now. Uh, essentially, right now, we're just going to look at uh, some flooding attacks and uh, cover a few more options in GNS3, such as uh, capturing and Wireshark. So. But uh, essentially, if we're in the command line, we can run HPing 3 directly, and this is some of the options. Um, obviously, there's a ton of options in HPing 3, and I'm not going to cover nearly all of them, but essentially HPing 3 allows you to craft packets, and uh, it allows you to craft special packets. A lot of times, routers can't handle it, or you know they, they handle it incorrectly, and that can cause you to be able to take advantage of like a ping of death or denial of service attack. So. Um, Anyway, those are all the options you want to look through them. Uh, we might cover a few of them, but right now we're interested mainly in the flood option. So let's cover. And uh, we'll be using the flood option. We'll be using a spoof, allowing us to spoof a source address. And we'll be using, let me see if I can find it in here, dash P, which should allow us to specify a destination port. So what we're going to do is I have command already set up there. Um, oh, and dash capital S, which I believe allows us to specify a source port. Let me see if I can find that. Oh, sin. Set the sin flag. So we're sending sin packets. So let's take a look at our 
HPing. HPing 3-S, which says it's a sin flag. And we're going to change that to our target, which is going to be 70.54.10.1. And A, which allows us to spoof. And we're going to say it's coming from 182.168.1.254. And we're going to put it to destination port is going to be 22. And we're going to flood it. So let's go ahead and take a look at GNS3 here. So essentially we're sending from here over to here and what we want to do is see the traffic coming in so what we're going to do is on external router if you right click after you turn those off so they don't get away you can hit the start capturing and you can do that on any of these nodes um, which is very nice so if we hit start capturing here you can choose an interface and we're going to choose um, external router zero zero and it'll show up in this list down here um, once it's up in that list there you can hit start capturing there and it turns green and then we should be able to start Wireshark and as you can see Wireshark is starting and these are all the EIGRP um, routing protocol that's just saying hello hello here I am um, that sort of thing so let's go ahead and we have this hping set up and we're going to also take a look at right now our CPU usage is at about 47 percent using a lot of memory actually uh, some of them might be chrome that's a memory hog but let's go ahead and flood it And it's sending it out of ETH1, which is not the correct one. So I have uh, config ETH1 down. And there we go. So that should solve our problems. And let's go ahead and get everything back up here. All right. Good. Wireshark is still running and there we go notice here and Wireshark just timed out automatically it uh, had a frame error but as you can see it immediately started this is when it started right here as you can see it just started dumping um, packets down the wire this will happen within a millisecond. It's really trying to flood it. And what also happened is that. So you can tell that that can be a dangerous attack. It can really tie up the resources of your router. So something you want to watch for. So now that we got that sorted out, that's the basics of an H ping uh, flood attack. So we'll go through a lot more of the options at a later time.